Guys, welcome back to another ride. I got my buddy Curran here uh, with me. He has never experienced full self-driving before, so I'm just gonna take him for a ride while we go out to lunch. Uh, it's gonna be a new experience. Oh yeah. Oh, hold on. Water. Sorry, I spoke. No, no worries. Red, white, and Q. Oh, it looks like you found our. That's the right one. Our barbecue okay. joint. We're not Let's going to the one fun of the route we'll take. Let's go this way. Why did I never go this way? All right, we got like an 11 minute drive, five miles. So I just press the brake. I put the car in drive. I just wait for the little icon to pop up that it's good to go. Sometimes it takes a little while. It's gonna be fun. Is there, the, the cones are gone? I don't know. Sometimes I have to just pull out just a little bit. Just to get onto the, right. the main area of driving. And there you go. Cool. That's it, man. Let's try this out. Nice pickup. Yeah. I drove in Adrian's, but he was driving the whole time. Okay, so you, you've ridden in a Model 3. Yeah. Okay. So it stops at every stop sign mm -hmm. at the line yeah. every time, and then it proceeds after that. But, uh, yeah, it's fun in the on these slow roads, but it gets it's even uh, more interesting on the on the regular streets. I have uh, license plates in the back, so it's right all yeah. crazy. No problem. <laughs> I usually just like clean up the sound because I keep forgetting to take them out. You know, the Tesla doesn't come with a uh, proper license plate mount on it, so. That's true, the front one. Well, I mean, it does, it just, uh, no, you it, have to like- It's kind of a- Glue it on. Yeah, glue it on, yes. <laughs> so. Yeah, but it handles the whole thing from start to finish. Nothing scary so far. No, I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, we're not, we're not trying to scare you. Some people freak out. Some people do freak out, yeah. On, on my end. But you, I've heard stories where people go into it and they start getting scared that no one's operating the vehicle. Yeah. No, Someone I was talking to said that it was too weird. Uh, actually, Adrian said he he said it was too weird when he was in full autopilot. Okay. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm, and well, the... But I don't know, he's probably using it at this point. Yeah. yeah I'm just taking a long way here, yeah, so. yeah. Definitely has its certain style of driving. It's a safer. It's like a less aggressive way, so it can profile the terrain and other vehicles properly. Yeah, and I find that it's like very human-like in those scenarios. Yeah, and uh, we're only taking most of the back roads here anyway. Yeah, it's no being like the software required to go on these roads is fairly simple stuff. There's a lot of open source stuff on this. It's uh, all the decision making and handling other, interacting with other vehicles, which is really where the art is. Yeah. I mean, this one is uh, full AI at this point. So they used to have like heuristic code to like do certain things in certain situations. Yeah. And uh, now they're, uh, they're doing fully automated end-to-end -end AI on local roads. They still have the heuristic software on the uh, on the highway mm -hmm. and it does act weird on the highway like uh, when I take the exit for the office here yeah. it like follows the white line so if the exit is like really abrupt it'll do that maneuver and it'll, it'll feel like you're going off the road for the right. split second until it like hits the white line and then straightens back out but other than that it does pretty well it still makes mistakes so it is supervised so it used to be a beta and you have to touch the steering wheel all the time, like every two minutes or so. Now in the supervised, you don't have to touch the steering wheel. It like uses this camera in here to right. monitor your eyes. And then uh, as long as you're looking forward for like a reasonable amount of time, basically. Yeah, you're not just staring at your phone for five minutes. Yeah. Oh, no, like the phone, it doesn't mess around with the phone at all. Like if, if you like looking at your phone for more than 10 seconds, it'll start beeping at you to like hold on to the wheel or like and then if you do that three times it shuts off fsd 
for the ride so you can't turn it back on so you do get penalized so I like I, ever since the uh, FSD started me driving around I barely use the phone honestly well partially because I record with it yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh you know it's uh I've been kicked out once or twice but they're working towards unsupervised and they recently released in the new version the uh the smart summon where you can call the car in the parking lot yeah yeah I, I saw um, our old CEO do that oh, okay one time Albi yeah he was uh, visiting back in 2020 okay cool yeah so that's the so that's the old version and that was heuristic code yeah now the new version it's all AI and they, they are expanding it uh, so eventually it will be able to be summoned from anywhere which is kind of crazy has to get on supervised first. How do you feel about these sharp turns? Like the, it really feels good, right? Yeah, you yeah. Feel like it's and I know like the Tesla. Around. I know this car can handle it sharper, more sharply, if you had a human driving it. But it's, it's uh, again trying doing things in a in a more restrictive manner to ensure that it's uh, it, it's safe to drive and that it doesn't run into any issues where. Yeah, they definitely like dial back the because they, well, there's different modes. So I have mine set on chill. Yeah. See it up here. So I like like a smooth drive because I get car sick right, pretty right. easily. So if I'm not driving myself, I see. But you can turn into onto, you can turn it to like aggressive, which I'm assuming is like a New York driver or something yeah, yeah. like that. But, uh, basically, I just keep it on chill. Because like an aggressive, it start it tries to like pass cars more, yeah. and like and it doesn't sit in lane. Like if we have three cars stacked up here, and like the right lane is open, it'll try to like cut in mm -hmm. and then cut over to the in front of the other traffic. And uh, I just like to chill back, relax, and get there safely. My guess is that the aggressive mode probably still goes back to relax mode on. So at certain points oh yeah yeah i think it's just like they try like different versions basically and i like a lot of people out there that do videos like me they they use the aggressive mode for the most part but i find those accelerations just too fast and i don't want to be like shaking around where it's like takes off like crazy and then has to slow down five seconds later because it's uh you know it's getting too close to the cars in front of us this is actually a pretty nice way to get over there. Oh yeah. Uh, Go, skip going through that intersection. I mean, I always go through that intersection, so I figure I give the people something a little bit different to look at, because that's like my, my drive home is down the main intersection in town. Everyone, well, like half the town has Tesla's now. Yeah. I see a cyber truck every day. Every time I, go, do? I come down to this, oh. the, get a point somewhere uh, down the main area of Warren, I always see a cyber truck somewhere. Nice, yeah, no, I, don't, I don't see them very often. I'm maybe seeing like five or six of them. What are your thoughts on the cyber truck? You know, it kind of, um, kind of doesn't really meet the, Whoa. yeah, I, th uh, I think it would have been nice. It's breaking. It's okay. It's okay. It uh, no, I know, but it hasn't happened in this version before. So uh, I got this two days ago. Yeah, yeah. So this is definitely uh, you got firmware. Unexpected. Yeah, so uh, the Cybertruck doesn't really fit the profile that, that you need out of a heavy vehicle. I know if they just, uh, if it was just like a heavy duty vehicle that had a lot of storage and capacity, it would be great. You know, the, the nice thing, you know, the thing I'm sure it's probably in the back of the minds of, is to add some self-driving features to some uh, vehicles that it tow or ha have extensions in the back or, or carrying uh, ca carrying uh, expanded goods. Mm -hmm. uh, that's definitely something that could be a little more challenging too. Like having a trailer on the back. Oh one. yeah, for sure. I have to take the turns differently and depending on the size of the trailer and the profile on it. 
So right now the Cybertrucks, they don't have any FSD exactly. on them right, because right. of the rear wheel steering, I believe. Mm -hmm. Because their rear wheel moves as well. Yeah, so yeah. they have additional motors to worry about during the during the drive. But it is it should be ready, they said, by the end of this month or early next month. So they have an event coming up on October 10th where they're going to reveal the uh, Cybercab, which is the one without the steering wheel or pedals. Mm -hmm. And they're hoping to produce them starting end of 2025, if I remember reading correctly. So that should be... Uh, it should be interesting. I hope they do some like crazy demo because they rented out the uh, Warner Brothers studio. So I'm hoping they're gonna do some like RoboTaxi demos. Yeah, it's definitely like this version is definitely jumpier than the previous one. It's like it gets nervous a lot. But it does do good with like. Uh, it like locks in a speed limit and then it just goes that speed limit. Mm -hmm. oh, it's because the rooms are so narrow. What do you think so far? Are you pretty nervous at all no, about it? No, not really. You feel pretty comfortable? Pretty comfortable. Yeah. Okay. Not nervous. You know, I, people, I, people mover. You, hey, I, you know, the things I worry you know, more about the large scale implications of what all this technology does to society. I'm not so positive like you about everything. Why? What do you, what do you think? Uh, I don't happen? know. You know, I, I think there's just a lot of things where, think, where, you know, it could go in the wrong direction. But you know, you like know, maybe that's cars we're talking. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> it's just, you know, just the uh, all of the unknown effects, the tertiary effects that. That happened when uh, with technology like this. That's that pretty much it, it. Pretty much is taking away a, a, to the point in a couple of years a lot of the thinking that was, used to be required for driving because that's all all the decision making that had had to be done. And so, uh, you know, the ability for uh, AI to do this can uh, bring about uh, a lot of changes. Uh, you know, and shift a lot of people's jobs and what they do. You know, you know, it's uh, pretty much there's just a lot of unknown unknowns yeah. from what I see it. And uh, to me, it just seems mostly positive besides the whole, you know, losing jobs. Is well, most people don't like safer. Well, most people don't even like the jobs anymore. So, uh, yeah, but we're like, you know, like if a plane falls out of the sky, we're like, oh my god, you know, two hundred people died, and then like four thousand yeah, people a year die, and. Uh, car accidents and uh and we're like oh yeah that's not a big deal we still have to uh disengage to park but, all right and but then also you'll get to experience the self-parking that's cool uh, it does park really well every time it's like perfectly centered in the spot too unless better, they, better than have, me <laughs> unless you have cars that are like uh kind of like crossing over like yeah, if somebody parks too close to the line, that it'll shift over enough yeah. for you to like open the door. Right, 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 right. So I haven't done one of these with the stop. It's pretty cool. There we go. Yeah. That's it, man. That was neat. All right, awesome. Thank you guys for watching. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. So you're there for the next one. Take care of yourself, your family, and have a great day.